While much of the world's attention is fixated on sleek stealth fighters and futuristic sixth generation prototypes, the United States Air Force has made a surprising move. It's spending billions, not on a brand new design, but on something far older, a fighter jet that first flew in 1972. This is the F-15EX, also known as the Eagle II. And while it may look familiar, it's anything but a nostalgic throwback. In fact, in a world increasingly dominated by hypersonic weapons, evolving air defenses, and growing global tensions, this so-called legacy aircraft might be exactly what the US military needs right now. Consider this, a single F-35 stealth fighter costs upwards of $80 million and has faced persistent delays as it struggles to integrate its most advanced systems. Meanwhile, six generation concepts like the F-47 remain years and billions of dollars away from frontline service. But the threats, they aren't waiting. They're here and they're evolving faster than the aircraft designed to face them. The Air Force needed something it could deploy immediately. A platform with range, payload, and reliability. And that's where the F-15EX comes in. It's a Cold War design that's been reborn with modern technology. Despite lacking stealth, the Eagle II is no underdog. It can carry more missiles than any other fighter in the American inventory. Up to 22 air-to-air -air weapons. And that's more than three times what an F-35 can carry internally. The strategy here is simple. Stealth fighters like the F-35 and F-22 slip in first to eliminate air defenses. Then the F-15EX follows, unleashing overwhelming firepower once the skies are more permissive. It's not stealthy. It doesn't have to be. Because what it brings is volume, reach, and adaptability. With advanced radar, a powerful electronic warfare suite, and an open mission system designed for rapid upgrades, the Eagle II isn't replacing stealth, it's reinforcing it. And its revival signals something deeper, a shift in doctrine. Perhaps the future of air power isn't just about being invisible, it's about numbers and being ready with jets that can fly today, carry more, and stay in the fight longer. Yes, the F-15EX is a 50-year-old design, but in many ways, it's the perfect answer to a 21st century problem. So the question becomes, in tomorrow's air war, Will stealth be enough? Let's find out. PilotPhotog.com Let's get one thing straight. This isn't just an old F-15 with a fresh coat of paint. The F-15EX or Eagle II may look like its Cold War ancestor, but under the hood, it's a beast built for a modern war. And in modern war, it's all about information. So we'll start with the sensors. Up front, we have an advanced ASA radar, the AN-APG-82. This thing can track multiple targets at once, burn through jamming, and give the pilot a real-time picture of the entire battle space. That's great for finding targets and sending out the ordnance, better known as offense. But what about defense? Now we'll add in the EPAWS suite, or the Eagle Passive Active Warning Survivability System. This is built by BAE Systems, and it basically gives the Eagle II a digital force field. It can detect threats, jam radars, deploy countermeasures automatically, and even adapt to new enemy systems mid-mission. It's almost like an onboard AI that learns throughout a sortie. But what about controlling the jet? You may be surprised to learn that all previous versions of the F-15, from the A to the E model, were not fly-by-wire. So that's another upgrade for the Eagle II, a fully digital fly-by-wire system that replaces the old hydraulics. This means smoother flight, tighter turns, and more precise handling, especially when flying low and fast. And get this, the Eagle II doesn't just bring speed, it also brings stamina. Thanks to those conformal fuel tanks, it flies farther without sacrificing hard points or maneuverability. And speaking of hard points, here's where it really earns the name Missile Truck. The F-15EX can carry up to 22 air-to-air -air missiles, more than any other fighter in the US arsenal. That's more than triple what an F-35 can carry internally. And if you wanna switch roles mid-mission, 
no problem. It can mix in JASMs, GBU-53 Stormbreakers, and other smart munitions for precision air-to-ground strikes. But in today's digital age, software is just as important as hardware, which is why this jet is built on an open mission systems architecture. Now, what that means is faster software changes, easier integration with new tech, and less time stuck in hangars waiting for a patch. Interestingly enough, this is exactly the approach that is being taken with the 6th generation B-21 Raider and the F-47. So there's something to be said about adopting this for the Eagle II. But what about stealth? Now look, clearly the Eagle II is not stealthy, but it doesn't need to be. The Eagle II is here to bring range, payload, and firepower in bulk. And that's what makes it so deadly and valuable. All right, here's the thing. Modern air combat isn't about one perfect jet. It's about how platforms work together. Think of the F-15EX as the muscle behind the stealth. You've got those fifth gen F-35s and F-22s out front, sneaking in, taking out key radar sites and SAMs. That's the ninja move. But right behind them comes the Eagle II, hauling more missiles than a stealth jet can even dream of. It's the heavyweight boxer or bruiser that finishes the fight once the door is kicked open. That kind of flexibility matters because stealth jets are limited in internal weapons to maintain maximum stealth. When you want to bring a lot of firepower, speed, and range to the party, you call in the F-15EX. And let's talk logistics. The Eagle II can be built and deployed now. No waiting for a 6th gen prototype that's still locked in wind tunnels and renderings and budget battles. This thing is greenlit today. It uses existing infrastructure. Pilots already trained on Eagles can convert faster. Maintenance crews don't need to reinvent the wheel. All of that means faster deployment, fewer delays, and more jets in the sky when it counts. And with tensions rising in the Indo-Pacific, the Middle East, and Eastern Europe, you need options that are ready to fly right now. Because while stealth is great for the opening punch, wars aren't won in the first round. The F-15 Eagle II gives commanders a jet that's fast, adaptable, and capable of sustaining the fight long after the stealth fleet rotates home. In a real war, that kind of staying power could make all the difference. Now look, I'm not here to throw shade at stealth. It's absolutely critical, especially for first strike scenarios. But here's the hard truth. Stealth alone won't win a war. Stealth jets are expensive, limited in payload, and often grounded more than they fly because of maintenance complexity. They shine in those first few days of a conflict, slipping past radar, hunting key command nodes, blinding the enemy. But once the element of surprise is gone, you need fighters that can stay airborne, fly long distances, carry the load, and hit back hard. That's where the F-15EX thrives. It's not hiding. It's showing up loaded for bear. Think about it. Modern threats like Russia's S-400 or China's HQ-9 are evolving fast. Infrared search and track systems, or IRSTs, that use optics and not radar signals don't care how radar absorbent your coding is. In short, stealth is no longer invisible. It's just harder to see, and even that window is closing. The Eagle II doesn't play the invisibility game. It plays the overwhelming force game. It says, yeah, you see me, but good luck stopping this payload. And if you do manage to shoot, then EPAWS kicks in, jamming your radar, popping countermeasures, and breaking lock before the missile gets close. So while stealth jets are tip of the spear assets, they're not built for saturation, for attrition, or for carrying a dozen types of weapons at once. Maybe we need to shift the way we think. The future of air power isn't either or, it's both. To be clear, the F-15EX isn't trying to replace stealth, it's reinforcing it. It's the jet that backs up the ninja with the sledgehammer. And it's not just the US that sees value in a heavyweight, non-stealthy fighter like the Eagle II. Poland just linked a deal to buy 48 F-A-50s and is eyeing more F-15 class platforms to counter threats near the Russian border. Indonesia, they've signed on for 24 Eagle IIs, calling it the most cost-effective way to project air power in the Indo-Pacific without waiting on a stealth fleet that they can't yet afford. 
Even Gulf nations like Saudi Arabia and Qatar are keeping their F-15 variants active and upgrading them because in a real shooting war, you want jets that can fly, fight, and refuel without drama. So while the US is leading the change with the Eagle II, our allies are watching closely and some are already joining the fight. All right, let's zoom out for a second. The Eagle II isn't just about missiles and metal. It's about how the US military thinks about the next war. For decades, the playbook was simple. Invest in bleeding edge stealth tech. Stay ahead of the curve and win the fight before it even starts. But somewhere along the way, reality punched back. Costs skyrocketed. Delays stacked up. And more importantly, peer adversaries started building a lot more jets fast. Suddenly, it wasn't just about having the best plane. It was about having enough planes and having them ready to fly. And that's where the F-15EX steps in. Not as a compromise, but really as a course correction. It's cheaper to operate, easier to maintain, and can be produced on existing lines without waiting for the next stealth miracle to roll off the assembly floor. The F-15 Eagle II is a hedge against uncertainty. It's a counterbalance to the all eggs in one basket approach. And this shift isn't just happening in the Air Force. The Navy's keeping Super Hornets in the fight while it figures out what the FAXX will look like, if it even gets built. Come on, Navy, get this FAXX thing done already. Meanwhile, the Marines are doubling down on distributed ops, not just stealth. So what does that tell us? It says that after decades of chasing perfect stealth, the Pentagon is waking up to a simple truth. Sometimes good enough and ready now beats perfect and late. The F-15EX doesn't pretend to be invisible. It just promises to show up armed, aware, and absolutely lethal. And in a future war of attrition, or better yet, as a deterrent, that might be the ace in America's hand. So here we are in 2025. The Air Force is investing billions into a jet that was first designed when gas was 36 cents a gallon. But this isn't nostalgia, it's strategy. F-15EX production is ramping up through 2026, and as those airframes come off the line, the Eagle II isn't just joining the fight, it's redefining it. There are already plans to integrate it with hypersonic missiles. Using it as a testbed for drone teaming are already underway. And its open system design means it can plug into tomorrow's tech, like AI, just as easily as it handles today's threats. But maybe the biggest impact isn't on the battlefield. It's on the whiteboards inside the Pentagon. Because bringing back the Eagle in an age of stealth signals something big. A shift away from the idea that newer always means better. Instead, we're seeing a new doctrine emerge. One that values balance, reliability, and adaptability. Seriously, very few YouTube channels talk about reliability and availability of aircraft. You can have the best aircraft in the world, but if it's a hangar queen, it doesn't mean anything. Now again, the F-15EX isn't here to replace the F-35 or the 6th gen F-47 NGAD. It's here to stand beside them, to carry the payloads they can't, to stay airborne when they're down, and to strike hard when surprise is no longer an option or available. And when the next war comes, and hopefully it doesn't, not just a skirmish, but a full-scale multi-domain slugfest, we may find that stealth alone isn't enough. We might see that firepower, range, and readiness matter just as much, if not more. So maybe the Eagle II isn't just a stopgap. Maybe it's the cornerstone of a new kind of air power, where old school meets overkill, and where America doesn't just fly, it dominates. So what do you think? Has the Air Force made the right call reviving the Eagle? Drop your take in the comments, because I want to hear from the pilots, the veterans, the engineers, and the aviation diehards out there who know what it means to keep air power flying when it counts. Seriously, you'll find in the comments on this channel excellent conversations from those who fly, fight, maintain, or design these incredible aircraft. So engage and join the fray. And if this episode gave you something to think about, share it. These stories matter. The headline skims the surface, we dive deep. And if you want more intel on fighters shaping tomorrow's battlefield, hit that subscribe button, give it a like, and sign up for my newsletter 
Hangar Flying with Tog. Every week, I track history in the making as well as current events. And if you want to go deeper, behind the scenes breakdowns, mission planning, and early looks at every video I produce, those are waiting for you in Tog's vlogs. Available to all channel members and Patreon crew. Thanks for watching, and remember, air power is never just about the plane. It's about the people who fly it and the nation that backs them. Stay sharp, and now you know. PilotPhotog.com